need the uh, YouTube link. Well, I guess I can find it. Yeah, We're it just. Live. We're live now. We're live. Uh, Ken, the YouTube, YouTube link, you should see it in the bottom right hand corner. Yo, welcome to the Beat People podcast. Yeah, yeah, Episode yeah. Episode yeah. four zero. I, I feel like we all should have 40 ounce OE. <laughs> oh, English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although. That wouldn't work for me anyway, but hey, y'all ever heard of somebody doing OE with like Hawaiian punch and calling a ghetto cooler? I have no. actually, man. I remember. Oh, that sounds God. gross. That yeah. sounds disgusting, don't it? <laughs> Let me tell you, man. I remember years ago, uh, this is back in the days of like, um, what was it when people would mix Hennessy with a uh, hypnotic and oh uh, man, yo, that's crazy. Thug passion, thug and, and passion. Crap. Oh, stop. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you bring it Cats, back, man. Cats used to play yep. the game of like, oh, you ain't up on this, and it would be the most horrible thing ever, the most disgusting <laughs> elixir of all. Yeah. Nah, yo, that that's like that's like back when Cisco was popping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, got, I got a Cisco yeah. story that I will not share on this show, but I'll tell you, it was an experience. Yo, that Cisco is like right. automatic, like Cisco is like automatic babies. <laughs> <laughs> and, and automatic potential illegal activity. After yeah, it's like, Cisco. it's like you wake up, you see you, sweetheart. Love you. Bye. Um, it's, Bye, uh, Ashley. It's uh bye Ashley, everybody in chorus. She can't hear me because I got my headphones on. Yo, Cisco, yo, Cisco's the was the kind of drink that you like you wake up on somebody's roof with no socks on and a Hawaiian shirt on. Like, what yep. happened? That's Cisco in the winter. Yeah. <laughs> in the winter. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yo, so yeah, this is episode 40. Um and and it's been a little minute. My apologies for that. Ken calls me a lazy ass, but I I beg to differ. No, uh, but yeah, lazy, episode lazy, forty. But hey, listen, I made it happen, right? You did make it happen. You got <laughs> a, a very unique way of motivating folks. Yeah, it's in called the, in the final hour. It's called strong arming people. Yo, Inky yeah, those... in the chat was uh, <laughs> Inky in the chat was getting real was getting real mad. So I said, you know what, we need to make it happen. So dope. Made it That's happen. what's up. So yeah, we got somebody. Well, well, listen, we have the usual uh, suspects on the podcast. I got D still. What's up, man? Man, just chilling, my brother. Just taking it easy on Sunday in my pajamas. Word. That's Everybody what's up. Know. And we got uh, Ken Flux Pierce. What's happening? What's happening? He's probably at this very moment taking something apart. Uh, actually, I literally just put something back in my rack because I was like, I don't want people to see it all apart. <laughs> What's up? And then we got somebody new on the show, uh, new on the show, but definitely not new to our, our mini chat. So you know, yeah. <laughs> that we That's have what's on, up. On mini, level. <laughs> mini, mini, mini on another level chats. Yeah. yeah. What's up, Aaron? How are you, man? How's it doing, man? Welcome to the show. Nice, nice to be a part of the chat today. No, no doubt. doubt. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. So. But those that don't know, uh, Aaron's producer, well, you know, beat makers and stuff. Aaron is actually from my hometown, Chicago. Aaron, wait a minute. Let me not say that. You're in Chicago, but that don't necessarily mean you're from Chicago. Are you from Chicago or no? I am from Hyde Park, originally born and raised. Hyde I'm Park. Sure we've been in a lot of the same places at the same time and just didn't realize it. I'm um, sure, man. I'm sure we crossed paths. I mean, Chicago is a small town, you know? Yeah, it is, the, it is the it is the it is the small town, big city type of vibe. So, yeah. so yeah. Um. Uh. Uh. And Lee Coleman from Make Noise introduced me to a couple folks. Aaron is the most recent person that Lee has introduced me to. Um. And Lee also introduced me to uh Bryce. What did Bryce introduce me to Lee? I can't remember. Anyway, big mod bat yeah. family over here. Yeah, and, man. Uh, let's get down to some to some talking. So first, I want to talk about since we've been gone, one of us have taken the deep dive down the <laughs> rabbit hole of modular. And <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Anybody want to stand and say who that might be? <laughs> oh man! Man, y'all yeah, got me still. Y'all so, got uh, me, yo. Yeah, you off in there right now. You your rabbit hole. You done went down the rabbit hole. It's like kind of catacombs degree at the <laughs> man. So, so what made you take the plunge this way, man? Uh, honestly, I was I was looking for something new. 
like as far as like production and sound design uh one thing that's always been attractive to modular is that the same system could be a bunch of you can use it in so many different applications mm -hmm. like if you wanted to make beats with it cool if you want to process sounds with it cool if you want to just make you know if you send signals to control other stuff it's mm -hmm. great so i needed that in my life man like and then i ain't trying to have y'all like stump me anymore in the chat uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, but honestly, honestly, like, uh, I took I took the plunge real deep for my first module. Like, I bought the ER three hundred one as my first module. Mm. And yeah, that, that's that's a deep plunge right off the bat, yo. Yeah, I bought the ER three hundred one as my first module. And mind you, prior to that, I've been familiar with semi modular because I've had the Mother thirty two, the Mini Brute two S. So things like that have taught me about patching but now it's kind of like trying to create music solely in in this you know 6u rack that i have it's going to be uh pretty interesting and i'm just learning a lot about it so yeah hey, man let me ask you though you you um when you were living in portland didn't you have a, a small uh modular yeah setup yeah yeah, no? yeah yeah i still got it it's so it, it's a skiff i had 104 hp a 3u with my mother 32 in it and a whole slew of like modulation sources and effects. And then I had like a MIDI to CV uh, converter that I could just send out of my DAW into that and make a bunch of sounds. So I, I've been making, mm -hmm. you know, drum sounds and loops with oscillators and envelopes and all that stuff for a long time, but right. never independently, like away from a computer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Now, no doubt. now it's where I'm getting into like, the, like yo sit on the couch and make a beat by patching cables kind of joint. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. And you so, went to get ER three hundred one too, right? Yeah, it's supposed to be here in, in a couple of days. Oh, Leroy's on here. Oh snap. Uh, the the homie. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen him in a minute. That's what's up. So what, yeah. what what's in your case right now, Daniel? Um, I didn't see everything that was in there that you got. All right, um, so clocking. I know, I know you have like the Pamela's workout. So Pamela's uh, new workout is clocking everything for right now. Uh, Akimi's Tycho uh, is in there. Math, of course. Platts, Plunk, and Ornaments in Crime. Um, and then on the way is the SOB filter and a Trana module. Um, shout out to Anna module. Yeah, shout out to Anna module because, dude, I, I spent like a long time last night listening to all these different filters, and that joint sounded really, oh man, really good. And it's only 8 HP. So, uh, also Quad VCA from IntelliGel. Okay, you went with that one. That's cool. Yeah, Quad VCA from IntelliGel. And what else is on the way? Uh, Forgot what else is on the way, but here's here's my definite next ones that I'm getting. Like, oh, you already know the definite oh, bro. next ones. <laughs> that's, that's, you that's already like, know. You already know. That's a no, true no, sign. Yeah, that's no, no. Right. Okay. So the next joints that I'm okay. So I've been and Ken knows this. I've been thinking really hard about sequencers, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what's going to be my sequencer? Is it going to be a Eloquencer is it going to be a Fluxus one. Is it going to be whatever? So the first one that I'm going to mess with is the Fluxus one because I know I can apply it right away to everything that I'm already working on. So, but, 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 but here we go. Uh oh, that Maleco stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bro. What, what do you think about the Maleco, uh, what, Variegate uh, 8? Or you Yo. thinking the, the voltage block? All of them. The <laughs> 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 the whole wow. No, no, no. No, no. So here's here's why. Here's why. So the Variegate, um, the Variegate is very special um, because a lot of the examples that I've seen people do with the variegate hasn't really been my style but that is a killer sequencer like mm -hmm. it's insane it has some features that they took away from the four 
and they didn't add in the four plus. Like there's a, a gate delay right on it in the in the uh, mm. in the eight plus. Yep. That thing is like, oh my gosh, like that's one of like the features that I'm like, and then I'm gonna get the Maleco gate delay for other things that I'm using to sequence stuff. Then, yo, have you guys seen that quad LFO they got? Uh, no, not the LFO. Mm, no, I don't think so. Yo, the quad LFO is insane, and the quad envelope. Actually, I have is seen insane. it. Yeah, yeah, I think I have seen it. Yo, okay. both that like those are the four. Well, those are the five units I want to get. The variegated. <laughs> No, 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 and here's why, and here's why, because they they all work so well together, and especially if I want to build like a a supersonic drum machine, that's kind of what I'm I want to use for that sort of stuff. And now I'm realizing that I could have any machine that I want, basically by piecing these little components together, and that's why I took the plunge into modular because. I just have options. Like if I want to change the filter out so it could sound like a you know. Uh, S950, boom, get the MUM8, throw that joint in there, that's the filter yep. from that joint. So, that's man, I'm excited about lock modular in, in general, though, because you can make it into anything that you want it to be. Like, and, and, yeah. and, and we could all have a lot of the similar, uh, a lot of similar modules, and it'll, be, we'll all have different machines, different, you know, configurations, yeah. and, and it'll still kind of be a reflection of, of us, because I think all y'all guys, or, or at least D-Steel, you got it on the way, but all y'all rocking the ER-301, and I feel like every one of y'all uses it differently. Well, yeah, that, yeah, and man. and t- and actually to touch on what you were saying before, Corey, about um, changing things around, like, mm-hmm. for instance, like, Lee likes his Eloquencer be- below his ER-301, where I like my Eloquencer on the left, but then sometimes I like it on the right, depending on if I'm like chopping samples or if I'm playing keys. So that's another great thing about mm-hmm. modular is you can change the orientation of, yeah. your, of, yeah. your, of the way that you work. Yeah, I did, you, I did that yesterday. That. Yeah. yeah, I did that yesterday. I had my case standing up, all the stuff in there, man. I sat yeah. there and I just took, oh, big shout out to Bifaco for them Nerlies. Oh, uh, yeah, Bro. yeah. I think I need some of those, yo. I'm going to pull up the thing while I'm no. sitting here. Oh, Corey, so get, get the them show. joints because, bro, you know how long you spend unscrewing and screwing yep, stuff? I do know. Oh, I tell you, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, flip yeah. side yeah. to that is also, um, so the Nerlies are really nice. And then if you don't want to have something sticking out of your rack like that, nylon screws so you don't even really need washers but the nylon screws are clutch like i use those and yeah i love them like they they'll get the longer ones <coughs> what are they like eight i think they're like eight mm-hmm. millimeter and they they work great I just, I, just, I just don't got time yo i don't got time to be screwing stuff like that and then if i drop one of them joints and my dog eats it it's over like i'm gonna have to like <laughs> <laughs> no, I like good. the buff- I like the perfecto joints, but they're yeah. kind of expensive, though, right? Yeah, I yeah, bought a yeah, I bought a pack of a hundred for forty bucks. Wow! Yeah. But yeah, I don't I, I don't think I'm gonna have that many modules. You know what I'm saying? Like a hundred of them joints. You got how many modules you gonna need to? Um, I have probably two hundred right now, and I'm constantly like, "Damn, I gotta order more." <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. But yeah, you, well, yeah, I mean, you gotta have. You figure, you figure, like, let's yeah, say with a big case like that, you know what I mean? Four, you got like four, per four, module, four screws per module, unless it's know, a big module, some modules right? Too, but those modules you're gonna have more of anyway. But yeah, I don't know. It, regardless, it's nice to have. I ain't, that, that I ain't quick... on y'all level though. I'm not well, on y'all wish... level. <laughs> Yo, what I really uh, wish though is I would close. love to see. Um, have you guys seen the Kilpatrick audio modular format? The uh... Kilpatrick audio for it's not Eurorack format. It's it's his own format, and the way the modules snap into place. Oh man, it's so satisfying. Oh, that's cool. Like that's cool. It's like they're like. They're like, I don't know if they're magnetic plating or what, but like it's it, and then the way the the um bus board is, it snaps in almost like 500 series, I think. But it's like it just like clicks into place, so you can just kind of pull them out and put them in. Oh man, it's nice. That's oh, really nice. That. But you know, you know, one thing about uh my man at Kill Kilpatrick, Mister Kilpatrick himself, he thinks really out of the box with the stuff yeah. that he does. And it and it's it's dope. It's not like him going left. It's actually he has good 
a good design sense and he makes a lot of really dope products i haven't seen that what you're talking about ken but uh that sounds i'll pull dope. it up real quick just so you guys can see it uh you and and I'll, I'll see if i can find the link for the video of it because it's it's one of those weird you know like when you see people removing the um the screen protector off of it off of an lcd screen you're like oh, oh it's really yeah. satisfying to watch yeah that's yeah. how it is when you watch people <laughs> change the modules on this modular you're like oh, that's dope. oh man it's so nice that's yeah. super dope word that's so hey dope. you know something i think that's that's dope um another one of our mod bat brethren Volt controller, voltage controller. He oh, just, yeah. he just oh, got yeah. a, a Digitech and he just got um, a Digitone. And the dude is going ham every yeah. day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. yeah. It's, it's real dope. I, I think one, one, once I got uh, the Digitech, I remember thinking like, damn, this just feels like the, the future of like that classic machine mpc60 and sp12 it's, it's really dope and you know what they're gonna keep updating it yeah yeah that's dope hey guys uh, so this see. is um and Corey, if you click on my my screen yeah, i got you i it'll, got you it'll show it to the people but uh this is the kilpatrick format right here and you'll notice that like there's no like screws on the top and bottom of the modules hmm. um they just clip into place and it's kind of like Bukla esque in that the the it uses the um, banana jacks. Mm -hmm. So you can see here. Um, oh, okay. But uh, yeah, I, I'll I'll see if I can grab a video for you too. I just wanted to That's show dope. you guys a quick. And he sells different like completed systems as well, like the system one. Like they're not they're not cheap, but they're also kind of. I believe he has separated audio and um control signals i'm not sure uh i have to look into it more i'm just kind of like it's been a while since i even looked at this stuff but it's really oh here it is look at this let me just see if i can show you this and i'm gonna put some sound through here too so you guys can hear it um it's from a k format system you got to check so this out the k format or kilpatrick format uh is really easy unlike most modular systems there's no here we'll put it straight down the center so hole. yeah, that that's it. You got an Allen key in the middle. The, oh, I've seen this. That's this is great. There. That's a captive bolt, so that it won't grow system. Skip in a little and bit. use that to sort of pry the module forward a little bit. Um, don't use the pots to pull on the module. Wiggle and it, it just kind of clicks out. And then just lift it right out. Oh, and that's you'll cool. You'll see down inside. There's uh, four banana jacks in here this one's offset oh. a little bit so that it's not possible to plug the module in upside down and then there's a standoff here and that's the center retaining screw on the module and we'll skip um, in to see him putting it back easily. in to put it back in you just line it up you can feel it goes in easily and then just plugs back in and ah, oh that. That, is, that is great and, um, okay so bottom line is is like i just think that that's it's a fantastic uh format and um i mean that's that's really dope like I how, wish, how big are those modules i i think they're for you um so yeah, they're a little bit bigger than your iraq um mm -hmm. but man it, it's really cool format yeah that's no. dope, dope, dope. Yeah, I got a question. I got a question for each and every one of you. I think maybe we can answer it now or maybe towards the end of the show. But I need to know what are your essential pieces for making beats in the Eurorack? Because I need to start exploring. You're saying what are the essential pieces? Like, like what's something that you have to have in your rack when it comes to making dope ass drums? Power module. Of, co of course, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Like, for instance, Ken, when you were telling me about maths, yeah. I was like, man, this dude don't know what he's talking about maths. I went and then looked at maths, and I was like, oh, Ken is always right. And yeah. I was saying, one, one thing that I will say book. that I think gets um, by people that are just starting to go down the path of making beats on modular that can be easily overlooked is a basic analog sequencer. And the reason why I say that is not so much for just modulating pitch and whatnot, but man, like 
using a, a just a regular sequencer, not like a fancy one like a Fluxus one or anything like mm -hmm. that, but having one just as a modulation source throughout yeah. your rack can be super powerful because but, it can allow you to do modulations of of timbre and of yeah. decay times and mm -hmm. of so mm -hmm. many different aspects to a percussive voice that's that, that vocal block super, is for super super useful you know for me it's uh whatever can add color to what you're making like you know what i mean like a dope filter uh maybe character module or something like that like those things is are so essential because you 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 know what i found is that you're gonna make what you make no matter what you have cats typically I have agree. a style of stuff that they make right but the sound and the texture of it that makes it you know that boom bap flavor or the flavor of stuff that we would bang even if it's not boom bap is like you got to have something for me it was always about making sure i could color the sound so a really dope filter um and maybe you know like the character module because you can kind of do bit reduction and stuff like that so those to me are kind of essential because really uh when it comes to the sequencing i'm always using the mpc right and yeah. that interface the mpcx is interfacing with my modular which that is just kind of like um, it's like a physical freaking reasons. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Gotta look at it. Yo, did Gore you know? just add the S? Yeah, he did. Okay, I just had. I, I, no problem. I'm gonna leave it at that. Hey, Ken, that, <laughs> Ken, that echo is back. Yeah, I was. I was just gonna oh, say yeah, about the bad. echo. Yeah, the echoes that that's whack. But um, to right, jump on um, <laughs> it's in, to jump on the essential modules. Um, for me, it's ornaments and crime. I okay. mean, the whole reason I got into um, your rack was to modulate every and anything that I could. Yeah. So um, the ornaments and crime is super flat. Um, Daniel, you just got one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, you could just add modulation to to everything. It's true. Yeah, I mean, and and especially when you're talking to drums and you're building up that texture, and and you want that texture to kind of change over time because. One thing that um, hip hop is repetitive, right? But if mm -hmm. we can just add like that little bit of modulation, like and no bar is the same. Word. That's what there you go. Oh, no, that's course. exactly what I was. That's yeah. actually the reason like, I started key. doing mod map yeah. is so that I could break the monotony and push the envelope yeah. a little bit. It kind of add that element of uh, random and. So and, yeah. so and you and you know what people notice people notice it, it yeah. almost even if it's like a subconscious thing mm -hmm. like people notice like the little timbre changes and the little little modulations yeah. that are happening man mm -hmm. and, and that's what makes it a unique genre. So I saw this I saw this video um I forgot who it was but it, it was a guy making beat on the ER301 with a Kimmy's Tycho using like mouth sounds. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was Sequinox that did that. Yo, I didn't see that one. I didn't see that one. I was like, what is going on here? This was one of the dopest, like, vibes that I heard. And he was basically sequencing everything with the Eloquencer. But there was all this modulation happening in the drum sounds. That, and he was modulating everything in the ER-301. Wow. And I was like, yo, that is what? That is nuts. Also... I saw this one module that I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's the uh, Bifaco makes this thing called the Burst. Oh. Have you guys seen that? Yeah, I've no. seen it. No. It, it's, it, it introduces random ratchets. It's a oh, burst, a pingable, it's a pingable trigger burst generator. Okay. And I saw the guy making a beat with it, and I was like, yo, that is pretty. That is pretty wild. See, I like stuff like that. That's yeah. gonna in inject like random, random been, stuff. So not like I don't want to. I don't want to go insane about the three hundred one. Like I'm purposely holding back because these guys. <laughs> these guys all know. Like I've been in ER three hundred one <coughs> world like nonstop for the past yeah. what like month or so, and it's just. I'm completely engulfed in the ER301 at this point. I, I absolutely love it. But every, like, little thing like that, like, where it's like, oh, well, I want to make, like, a strange logic or a random or I want to be able to control a sampler in a weird way. I've been doing it all in the 301 lately. Uh, like, I have a lot of interesting ways of doing random already, but I've been using the 301 in a more hip-hop context to, like, slice up samples because I have, like... Uh, the phonogene 
Mm -hmm. I, I love the mm -hmm. phonogene. I love slicing up samples and mangling them on the <clears> phonogene. <throat> I use it to mangle samples in a way that I would never mangle on an MPC, ASR, or, uh, you know, SP or whatever else. Like, it, it's more for mangling things in a way that I normally wouldn't think of. So... When I mangle samples on the 301, a lot of the times I'll build a random module inside of it, like a pingable random, and then send all that stuff to the sample mangler that I've built inside of the 301 so that I can kind of get that same vibe and I'm not kind of going outside to pull in other voltages. <coughs> Excuse me, still getting nope. over a cough. Um, yo, you know what I just saw? I heard it the other day. Div Kid did a video on the God's Box Lollipop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. I saw it. I saw, oh, yeah. I saw, the, I saw the video. I haven't watched it yet, though. It was hot. It was hot. It was Yo, hard. let me tell you something. The vactual based opto um compressor. Hmm. Wow. I'm sorry. Which one was it again? God's Box Lollipop. Oh, I haven't seen that. I have to check Ken, it out. Yeah, it was crazy. Ken, Ken, you no, yo, dude. After the show, you need to you need to watch. Oh, well, there's show. Div right there. He just popped up in the chat. What's up? Yeah, man? yo. We're talking huh. about your face. What's up, Ben? Or the oh, mouth man. is here. Yeah, yeah. I watched. <laughs> I watched his video on that and the loose fruit. Yo. Yeah, yeah. I I need those in my life. Like. Okay, I'm gonna have to check that out. No, Corey. Yeah, dude, even you talking ben, about? You talking about color? It is like the. This is like to me. It's like the goopiest, warmest sounding compressor that I've heard. Wow! In Eurorack, and I've heard a couple of them. This is this is it. Wow! This is it. I gotta ch I gotta check it out and see if it's so. Whenever I see things that are like vectoral based effects of like compression or VCAs or low pass filters, whatever, the first thing I tend to do is see if I can build it. <coughs> excuse me, build it with a maths. Um, the warm star audio the bends and mm -hmm. um other modules like i try to see if i can build that functionality myself mm -hmm. yeah. sorry my cough is Hold killing on. me i'm still yeah, yeah. It's, it's been I mean, like three weeks trying to get over it you've been coughing for a long time while you yeah. while you uh well hold on i want to show this because yeah i want to see it because it like i was getting at is that's um oh. so the lollipop is that's something that I'm going to have to check out. But I love building compressors using the maths. And then I can also get different um, responses using, you know, different VCAs, VAC trolls, whatever else. But this thing looks great. And it's fairly compact. Uh, hold on. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Lolly. Yo, that joint sounds... Man, I heard it. I was like, I need two of them joints, stereo. <laughs> <laughs> well, cause just think about I'm thinking about pumping my mix through that. Yeah, like, yeah that's what's up. Like just yeah. oh the man, this what's like a price point on that thing? Oh, yeah, how much do they cost? How much do they cost? Uh, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> And does it have Please a kit? Like, I don't I even care, it says, bro. Give me I see it says full kits oh, full kits available. That's right on my house. I love so building modules. Job. Whenever I whenever I have the chance to build it myself, I love doing that. So yeah, hey, yo, I'm gonna head over and check that out. Ken, I'll Ken, you know, I'll buy them joints and you just build them for us. Well, there I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go look at that like today. So No, they talk. they sound great. <clears throat> okay, I, yeah, I gotta check that out. I saw so I was watching uh some some YouTube videos on the TV, right, with the fire stick or whatever it is. And uh, I saw Div Kid's video on it pop up, but I was I was sitting with the fam, so I was like, I'm gonna come back and watch that. So now I gotta go back and check it out. Yeah. Yo, yo, check this out. For me, it's crazy because what I would do is, I would use the compressor, but then I would use the Maleco gate delay to delay the gate that I'm sending into the compressor for the side chain, so that even that can inject like that Dilla swing uh, on the side chain compression. That would be dope. Like so, see that's what I'm saying. Like I'm here, my brain is exploding from freaking like <laughs> patching. Yo, last night I was up in bed staring at the ceiling, patching in my head, like just like oh, wow. like making <laughs> like making patches. Yeah. You in it? You in it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Like, yeah, like just making patches in my head. Like, oh, if I do this and if I do that, and I'm like, I don't even have this module yet, but I know I can patch this. Into the, and I'm like, yo, did you get the cockpit yet? No, not yet, not yet. 
Because, um, uh, cause, you know, that has a side chain um, on it already, so you might, yeah, you no, might want to look at it. And you know what's cool? What I like that, but one thing that really, like, I've been really focusing on is modules that are dedicated for specific things. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I, I want, like, a compressor, a module that's a compressor. Like, I don't want it to be, like, 20 different other things. I don't want it to be a mixer and a compressor. I want it to be, like, good at what it does because... I think for me, if, if I have that utility, I can apply it in all these other different ways. Also, I'm about to build a gigantic case because I, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. I mean, it's this still, happened go so ahead quick. and say it. Go ahead and say it. <laughs> no, look, right. no, no, no. Uh, uh, um, Aaron, I don't know if you heard this in the chat when I was like, "Yo, I gotta admit, Ken was right." When yeah. He yeah, but his yeah. Thing, to not start off with them small cases, dude. No, but here's the thing: I didn't. I don't like that case with the scoop design so oh, that's yeah. why i didn't get that case that one time he's but also just, wrong about that because the scoop is amazing i ain't about that scoop though i'm all i'm all about that, that scoop. i ain't on that scoop life <laughs> i ain't on that scoop life Corey is about... Corey, how you yeah, like the I scoop? Know. i know i know Corey scoop about that scoop. The scoop yeah Corey got all, a big scoop it. joint yeah Corey got the bad <laughs> scoop joint yeah mad scoop yeah. Two scoops. Shout out to <laughs> Ethereal Sun, by the way. If y'all want some dope custom <laughs> cases, Ethereal Sun. But Corey, but Corey, I'm not Corey. Oh, I'm sorry, Daniel. Um, just to let you know that that's actually it's not a compressor; it's a side chain. So it just does the side chaining. It doesn't oh, okay. actually, okay. you know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Um, so I th I don't know what you're actually looking for. If you're looking for like a full on like traditional I'm looking, compressor, yeah, I'm looking yeah. for compression just because. Part of my sound when it comes to beats is the way that I process my drums in the DAW. And I already know what that process is in the DAW. It's a certain type of compression that I use, certain right. ratio. I parallel that joint so I have dry drums coming through with compression. So I'm like, I want to I want to build that in the Eurorack. I want to build like a kind of a master chain of how I do stuff. What yeah. about what about taking your outputs out of your um your master output and using other outboard gear. You're just trying to do it all. I'm, I'm just trying. Yeah, I'm trying to not be in the studio when I'm patching. I'm trying oh, to be really? like. Okay. I'm trying to be like in another room with a speaker and kind of just making stuff in order to teach myself how to okay. work in the Eurorack. And then later, when I feel super comfortable, I can bring it into the studio and start integrating it with other stuff. But I'm not ready for that so, yet. So that, I'm not that God's box a lollipop joint is. 129 euro, 150 dollars US. They're around 150 dollars US, just so you know. It's a what? DIY project, though. Yeah. Is it? A, yeah. Oh, okay. And I need somebody building them. The I'm gonna be so building them. So we'll talk Flux, after the that show. That means Flux gotta yeah. make them. It's yeah, easier it. for me to build multiple things at once <laughs> than just one at a time. Yeah, so that means just Flux gotta make them. Yeah. I'm gonna make it happen. <laughs> no, that's what's up. I love compressors. So one of the things I was talking about in the chat in here is um. So the new Clark Technic stuff is, uh, well, the Clark Technic 1176 has been out for a while, but they're doing um, 1176 LA2A and the Pooltech EQ uh, for $299 is apparently what the price drop is going to be, which is crazy. You know, even if mm -hmm. I, I personally have not heard them, um, the circuits should be the same. The, the big question is how do those Midas transformers sound with it? Um, but uh even if you don't like the Transformers, I mean, that would be a pretty easy mod. So I'm definitely going to be grabbing some of those 1176 and LA2A. But one of the things that I was thinking about is, well, if I'm going to be opening these up to check them out anyway, because I always open up my gear <laughs> just to look because I'm nerdy There's like a little mod them and, and still that mod. Well, that's what yeah. I'm saying is, is that it probably would not be that hard for me to mod these things to have CV control. Um Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to do that. So, because uh, I'm that's already crazy. planning on getting two that's, of the 1176s and two of the uh, LA2As. So, I'm probably going to end up modding them with CV control just to uh, be an asshole like that. <laughs> you, Ken, are you saying trying to be one? <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, I succeed. I succeed. But, uh, yeah, the thing is, is like, I was looking at like the hairball audio stuff, uh, the, mm -hmm. the warm audio stuff. And, the and surfing, the surfing audio stuff too is good. Um, I just, I can't pass up the opportunity to get something for a price that I can risk screwing it up. Um, no, I feel you. Like for instance, when I got my MS-20 Mini, the before I ever even plugged it into the wall and played it, the first thing I did was open it up and start drilling holes in it. Yeah, because uh, that's you. 
Yeah, I can actually remember it. Like, I did it so, like, quickly and off the cuff. I didn't even bother to, like, line the holes up to make it, like... Like, the holes are all janky. Like, they're not in a straight line or anything. Ken, the I first was just like, time, I'm modding it! <laughs> Ken, the first time I even seen your Deep Mind or your MS-101, they didn't even have a body on them. You took them joints off and showed Yeah, them. that's true. I was like, oh I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, what's this dude, like, opening stuff Yeah, I just for? put the MS... I, I got the um the MS-101 right in front of me. I just put it back together. I had, I've wow. had it for a whole weekend. I'm like, what's Yo, this dude that, that was actually that was actually gonna be my next question because I saw your video, Corey, mm -hmm. um, which was real dope, by the way. Um, um, how are you enjoying that MS10? I mean, sorry, the MS, the MS101. Uh, I love the MS101. As a matter of fact, I'm I'm planning on doing a, a actually sort of recorded video. That was me going live, sort of a overview, and I was a bit rushed. But I plan on doing a, a more sort of, sort of recorded review of the joint. But I love it, man. It's actually pretty dope. The fact that they got the triangle wave and the the you can you know the FM options on here now that were not on the original SH. It's mm -hmm. pretty dope. It's really how's that dope. how's that filter? The filter is dope. It is that the classic uh, uh, rolling filter. And is, um, is there an input? Yeah, there is an input. It has USB on the back. It has uh, an input for external source. Okay. And uh, yeah, a couple things on the back. That's dope. Man, that's fresh, man. Do um, do any of you guys have a one on one to do a shootout? Um, side no. by side. I don't no, have the one on one. If they were cheaper, um, I would buy one, but I only see them for really expensive. I don't have the 101 here. Uh, I got a friend who has one, and he's brought it over a couple times. I didn't get a chance to shoot any <coughs> video. Okay. <coughs> sounds okay. sounds dead on filter wise. Um, the FM changes what it can do a lot. The sequencer on this one is a good bit easier, in my opinion, to work with. Um, as is the fact that it has a nice ARP that you can use. Um, some of the other changes, uh, it has a sine wave. Or, or not, I'm sorry, not sine wave, uh, triangle wave on it, which mm -hmm. is really useful uh, for getting like these really smooth bass lines and whatnot, which mm -hmm. is dope. Yeah. Um, well, you, that triangle the, wave with the sub oscillator, you can get some really dope bass lines. The yeah. big thing to me, though, is that FM, which makes it like, it almost makes it a completely different synth. Like the FM sounds so cool. I use it all the time. Like it's. It's rare that I'm making a patch where I'm not using some of that FM. Like it just sounds awesome on it. I okay, that that brings up a really cool point, Ken. So I just like, I want to show my jankiness real quick. That's my uh, my my, my <laughs> MS20 and how janky I did it. <laughs> oh my god, is that, is that your mod? I, like, dude, I, just, I never I knew it looked like, that. like. I was like, I was like, yo, I gotta do this. So I I modded it like right right oh, away wow. as soon as I got it. I was like. I have to figure out how to do this. <laughs> so, are you talking? So, you talking about that? Uh, the MS one hundred and one has the FM on it now. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, does. it does. Totally. Yeah, it, it, so, so can so, I can I make you hear it real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So check it out. All right. So um, I'm just gonna give it a straight uh, pulse wave, and all right. So here we go. Let's make sure I don't have any effects on. Huh? There we go. All right, so if I take the filter down a bit, give it just a little bit of resonance, and then I start bringing up, um, we'll start here. Let me turn this up. Now here's where it gets interesting. You can use um, octave down and two octave down, and then you get different levels of pulse width on that too. So check this out. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah, bro. And that, that is truly like a whole different scent right there. Good from yeah, there. I was going to say. Yeah. And noise. So check this out real quick. This is what I like doing. That sounds buttery. Wow. 
So yeah, you could do some really cool stuff with it. I mean, it's just yeah. it's a really cool synth. So, and then of course you can do is. two octaves down on the uh, sub oscillator too, which um, sounds sounds pretty awesome too. I mean. But yeah, like if you just use the filter by itself, the filter on this has a really kind of distinctive characteristic to it, mm -hmm. and it it's really the the thing that Corey and I were talking about is that. It's surprisingly useful because the 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 101 was really meant to be like a super budget synthesizer to begin with, like yeah. the original. Mm -hmm. Like it was it was plastic. It was a cheap synthesizer, you know. But because it's a single oscillator, and then you have the sub, it's very easy to keep everything nice and in in phase for bass lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like what you can do with the pulse width and the sub oscillator. Just using the one oscillator with a sub oscillator, you can make a thick enough and and proper bass line that it's like you don't need extra oscillators for that. You know, like yeah, you, you want to keep it basic like that to get that tight, smooth kind of. The way the filter is is it's just a little bit hairy when when you drop it down low. Keep the resonance <laughs> a little bit low and keep the filter cut off low. And it just man, it sounds really nice in hip hop tracks. Like it's yeah, really it, it sits in the mix That's really what's nice. Up. So this is one of those things where, again, when I always read comments on people talking about, you know, certain companies making copies of other synths, I'm like, well, they added this feature that can make it sound like a completely different synth. Completely different, yeah. And, and it, that's kind of what I value about it. Yeah. yeah, I know it's sensitive. But just get over but it. That, not... But that also, but that also brings up, <laughs> but it also brings up another question, like um, for you, Corey and Flux, like, do you think they could have actually marketed this synth as a completely different synth without having to have I the um they could have but it's that's not marketing yeah exactly and that's that's kind of the thing is it's like why would you and then on top of that it's so well it's so a pretty here, good replication the filter, of the same thing. it's just that it has enough additions to it that it could be like ms 102 <laughs> you right. know what i'm well, saying because to me because to me when you have that fm stuff it sounds nothing yeah. Like a SH 101 that I've heard. But yeah. also, if you turn that off, it does. Stuff, you know? But if you turn it off, it sounds just like an SH 101. You know what I mean? Like, if you just turn that down, it, you know, so it's not, yeah. it's not messing it's with cold. the rest of the circuitry. You know what I mean? It's just tapping off of it. Right. So, yeah. the other thing is, is that, so you have the 3340 oscillator, which, let's be honest, you're seeing it in a ton of stuff nowadays. So, of yeah. course, the Neutron has it, right? It's got two of them in there. And then you've got um, the Maleco Manther has it. There's a bunch of Eurorack oscillators with it. You're going to see a ton more stuff come out with it. I can promise you that. Um, and you should. It's a good oscillator. There's nothing wrong with that oscillator. It sounds great. There's a reason why it was brought back. It sounds good. It's very useful. Um, but the filter in the, in the SH-101 is a distinctive filter sound. It's not like the Moog ladder filter design it's not like the arp odyssey like it's it's, it's very much it's a recreation of the classic rolling filter though right yeah <laughs> yeah and and their their hand from what i understand um because I, I did talk with the design team a good bit about a lot of different things because that's what i'm doing is i'm testing it i'm trying to find flaws i'm trying to find where it can be improved that kind of thing um and it's being not only have they recreated that circuit but then they're also fine tuning it to make it sound like the vintage synth. Like yeah. there's trimmers on there and you can fine tune it a bit. Um, I will say this just strictly on the fact of like, Hey, how does this thing sound for a $299 synthesizer? Come on. It sounds really, really good. And I wasn't even like when, when I was informed, Oh yeah, we're sending this out to you to check it out. I was like, meh, like, okay. I have a lot of mono synths. Like I'm not going to, you know, first world problems. I have ton of mono synths. And <laughs> I love synthesizers, period. But at the same time, I have a ton that can do way more than an SH-101 can do, you know? Yeah. Plus, I have this thing. So, <clears throat> it wasn't about, like, being super excited on that level. But when I got it and started playing with it, that's when I was like, oh, wow. These little tweaks, like the FM, made such an impactful difference that, wow, this is just really usable and fun to play with. Like, it actually... Oh, it, it certainly I, elevated the synth quite a bit. There's something about not yeah. having to work to get the sound that you want in a track. 
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And certain synths do that. The sub fatty is one of those. Like for me, is one of my absolute favorite synthesizers. Even though I have stuff that can do way more, it's not a it's not a mini Moog. It's you know it's its own thing. It's one of my favorite synthesizers. It's very basic, but what it does, it does really really well. Yeah. I kind of feel the same way about the MS one hundred and one. Build quality is not the same as something like that. Like it's plastic. The knobs and faders feel fine, but yeah, it's very plastic. It has a the handle. Well, well the, fa it. the faders to me feel better than fine. And this is coming from, <laughs> you know, I've owned the Arp Odyssey, the Cork Arp, Arp Odyssey, and those faders were janky. But then I've heard mm. that the classic ones were too, right? So, um, but these faders are a whole different story. They're, They're not real wiggly or anything design. like that. I'm, I just not mean more that like the, the casing is plastic. Yeah, it is. Caps are like everything yeah, on it's plastic, are. aside from the transpose it's budget thing, and the LFO but it, it's well switch. done. But yeah, 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 I mean, it feels good. But for two ninety nine, I'm like, holy crap! Like yeah. something that I wasn't excited about, I'm actually like, wow, I I use this. Like it's sitting in front of me right now. Like this isn't sitting in front of me for no reason. It's because I was actually using it on a track the other night. Like yeah, for two ninety nine, um, man. Like that's that's a steal, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really is uh for but a I, I just like how it sounds period like i think the the filter sounds interesting enough that i really enjoy it you know what i mean like i have fun with it and that's at the end of the day that's what really matters to me is like am i having fun using something you know and you you know something else about this now listen i know a lot of people like don't do reviews or stuff like that with with you know putting delays and reverbs on on the thing but something about this particular scent it sounds so incredibly good with a nice delay on it and i think because it's a it's a good voice to start out with <laughs> you know yeah, what i mean you're getting your uh so so Cor i'm calling Corey out um mm -hmm. because i'm also not trying to make it 100 percent like a hey this is the 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 behringer ms 101 show because i know people do want to hear about it and i get that but I also know some people are like all up in arms about everything that Behringer does. And I'm like, whatever. Hey, arms up. You pay arms up. Okay. That, which, which is fine. It's like, you know what? There's people on both sides of the fence about it. That's fine. Whatever. Be your own. Uh, just so you know, the, the pedal setup that I have right now is I'm running it through uh, the Alexander Synths um, or Alexander Pedals, excuse me, Syntax Error, um, the Behringer Vintage Phaser, which is basically a. EHX small stone clone and then uh, the boss DD 500 uh, which boss is rolling so I bet you they're gonna fight somehow but no it sounds amazing uh, the boss DD 500 delay is like so slept on and people just don't realize how dope that delay pedal is um, yeah so but you, you oh, got yo. a new delay pedal and that's what I wanted to touch base yeah. on is did you actually uh, get your hands on it yet I didn't get it yet oh and I'm thinking about dirty yeah, because you know what? It's uh it's back ordered. Um and and I'm excited about it. But you know what? What's weird is that I'm thinking of canceling it because you know, sometimes you, you get into like something that. because you don't get something else. So you have it. <laughs> well, I know exactly what, what you mean. What would you want to cancel it for? Um what what I think I'm really, yeah, what I really want is a magneto. So I started oh, thinking magneto about that. Like, well, that could that money could go towards a, a magneto. But I actually recently found out about this. Uh, what is the cork D? SD, it's the SD three thousand. Three thousand. Something like yeah. that. Yeah, and it, and well, I watched some demos of it. It's pretty dope. Perfect Circuit has a really dope demo of it on uh, uh, Profit Twelve, and it's a it's a pretty dope stencil. So it's a digital programmable delay. It's a pretty dope uh, delay. But I'm thinking about uh, telling them to cancel the orders is on back order, and then I'll, I'll probably put that money towards a Magneto because that's what I've really wanted. So, yeah, I got I got that Magneto on modular grid on my uh, on my second rack that I'm building right now. <laughs> Bro, this man is crazy. <laughs> this man has lost his mind over here. He's all with it because my first one is built already. So <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah. Also, you yeah, know what I'm looking at. Mike on, Corey, you know what I'm really looking into? I I, I put in a couple bids on them. Uh, Nord Drum Two. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Dude, don't Zeke. don't blow up. Don't do a blow up the spot. <laughs> <That's> from... <laughs> I've been no, watching them too. No. I have been watching them, but <laughs> the only reason I'm not gonna get a Nord Drum too is come on, Jordy, Aaron. Come on, Aaron. No, I mean Jordy. we are we on a live chat, dude. We could do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Steel. 
That's Jordy, what's in out Jordy for you. has one, and that's the only reason I'm not going to get it is I don't want to give him the satisfaction of me getting it and mm -hmm. then hearing it from from like Blue I Finger. told you so. <laughs> <laughs> so look, look at this, look at this delay though. This is the delay Ken has up. That's yeah, yeah, the, I have uh, it up. Do, do you want to hear it 3, or? Yeah, check it out. Okay, so let, let me just send uh... Not on a guitar though. Uh, well, <laughs> that's what you're going to hear it on, so like, Don't on. say words. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. Not on a guitar. <laughs> yeah, go to that perfect circuit video. Yeah, man, go to the perfect dude circuit that does one. Art. I have, I will say that I did look into this pedal a good bit and it looks like a really quite nice pedal um yeah so uh hold on let me stop my screen share so yeah yeah I'm getting getting we could we could get into we can get into the noise drum too if you really want to yeah y'all get oh, oh, oh wait wait oh wait but wait before we go down and because i i got i feel like there's a couple things that i wanted to to touch on and one i'll save for last because i know it's probably going to be crazy to talk about because i've been talking about it non-stop and other oh, I, we're <laughs> in so we're in but, uh yeah so 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 before we get into that um, what's your thoughts on this joint? I'm about to show it on my screen. Uh, so Craft here, synth 2.0. I think it's I think it's I like cool. that they gave it a house. I'm glad it's not a naked synth no more. That, yeah. that little thing that they had. No, before. well, I like I like what I like those ideas, and they actually sound good, man. Nick Bat did a did a Sonic uh live uh review on it where he played like the first joint. And it sounded really good. I I feel like this is gonna sound good too, man. Yeah. I have some friends who have the um the craft and the sculpt, and from what I've heard from most of my friends, they're not thrilled with the build quality, even for how cheap it is. Um, oh well. That, that being said, they all seem nice. to really like the sound. So it's it's one of those things where it's like, okay, well the build quality might be garbage, but do you like the sound and? which is more important to you and by how much to me i'm interested in it but i also feel like and, and this is this is a really like rude statement so like i'll, I'll be very clear about that go um, ahead can be you i kind of feel like <laughs> i don't want to throw away money on something that i feel like i would use for like two seconds and then get rid of like or, or i would just something about it screams you're gonna get bored quicker than you think or you know what i mean or it'll be something dope to have in your backpack with your mpc live that's word that's, no, that's yeah for it's, sure it's like it, it looks great as a portable piece of gear and all but for me personally when when the way that i work i just feel like i wouldn't put it in my backpack like it would either be by itself or it wouldn't be in my backpack at all like i'm not that guy <laughs> Ken's gonna have it like next to his backpack, next to like a meatball sub or something in there. Yeah, well, well, no, like, because I, Corey knows, like I use I use portable gear a ton. Yeah, like yeah. I, I keep stuff with me in my car. I always have a, a portable recorder. I always have like a Volca Beats, mm -hmm. an MPC Live. Like I always have something. Even my modular. Like I bring. Bro. I have a a three U section of my modular that I always bring with me, and. Gino. Ken will take them joints to Costco. I do. <laughs> like, like, I'm I out here waiting on them like, to come back. <laughs> dude, like, you know how boring it is, like, grocery shopping? Come on. So, like, I, I do ridiculous things like this, but at the same time, like, this looks like something to me that I just don't, ah, man, it, it just didn't scratch that itch in the right way. I don't know why. Yeah. I think they're kind of dope. I like the, you know what I think is dope about modal though? What I think, well, at least is what's interesting. I'm going to stop sharing this for a minute. What at least I think is interesting is that they hit the market with the biggest shit they could possibly hit the market with. And then with the I smallest mean, joint. Yeah, now they flipped it on its head. Like they, they came in with the biggest, most expensive synths. And then they 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 came out with the one joint, is a 002. And then they did the the 008 or whatever it is i can't remember the names but it was like big joint after big joint after yeah. rack size big joint after big price tag after big price tag and then now they're dropping them down to like 2.99 cents that they throw it out there but i think i think they all suffer with the same problem the build quality because yeah. because even with the real expensive cents like i heard they sounded good mm -hmm. but they weren't really built like, like yeah what good. they were priced at yeah. so, so Okay. Corey and I had done a lot of shows like where like we did interviews with modal and you know I will just say when I put actual hands on on them 
I wasn't thrilled. Like I personally, mm-hmm. and, and a lot of it, to be perfectly frank, was personal taste. So the the hand or the 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 solid aluminum knobs that they use, I in theory sounded great. When I actually put my hands on them, I didn't love them. Um, like I would even prefer like cheaper Rogan knobs from like Mutable Instruments on it. Like I just mm-hmm. didn't like the way it felt. The buttons didn't feel great. Some of the oh, demo you units are right. that I, I saw, forgot about the buttons, Joe. Some of the demo units that I saw, some of the buttons were actually broken and pushed in. Now, granted, these are demo units that were used on a, you know, on a convention floor. Um, at so but like the ones, the, the ones at Knobcon were broken, yeah. and I'm like, I'm like, okay, so so yeah, I get it. It's demo, but at the same time, I'm like, it's demo. Like it's on a, you're showing this off to people, and it has pushed in buttons. Like that's not a great look. And then the worst thing that really kept me from going modal was the fact that their um, A to D converters in them are really low res. And the so like the filters and if you send it CV, all that stuff, you get steppy filters. That was the biggest thing. Honestly, after we realized how steppy the filters were, I was done. I was like, uh, oh, well, there it is. I mean, you know, <laughs> Yo, steppy filters. So, like, filters Dave Smith like gets away most... with steppy filters, but his stuff isn't four grand unless you're getting, like, a profit right. X. Like, I Yo. just couldn't see it for for the for the price of these units. I felt like everything should be over spec not mm-hmm. just barely spec or under spec. It, it has to be, be like Roland. It has to be like Roland over spec. Like you know how. And they that's the thing is the Roland stuff <laughs> is like absolutely yeah. the Matrix Brute, the digital control on the filters for that over spec. Like filter control, modulation, CV, all that kind of stuff should be over spec to the point where. You should never ever have like the harmonics should be. Well, you you should never have a four thousand dollar synth that you have to worry about things that you would have to worry about on a a, a sub one thousand dollar synth. You know what I'm saying? Like that's part of the thing. They should high end things should be high end because they take all of that stuff into consideration and raise the level quite a bit. You should get great value out of it. Um, that's not to take away. But those things, those joints do sound good. They make good sound and sense, but it's just that kind of stuff. You can't short folks on that kind of stuff. Yo, that's like the most like niche insult you could say, like at a knob con or something. Like, yeah, yo, my man got <laughs> yo, my man got steppy filters. <laughs> oh man. It's like the Wu Tang skit. Get out of the they, they, they got garbage down the way. They got like, steppy filters down the way. Like, like yo, I heard <laughs> that my kids throw in, in this household. Is because my kids are always on the net. Like, they're, they're like, "Yo, your internet's slow." Like that's that's how it'll hit you, right? Yo. And, and that to me is like that to me is like yeah, that's the equivalent right there. Yeah, you like, got steppy like, filters, son. Like like yo 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 your your girl told me you got steppy filters. <laughs> your girl <laughs> told me. Wow. And like, people, poke fun, ointment. people poke fun wow. at the fact that I can't stand Dave Smith filter control uh, because like all all of his filters are steppy like that. All of them. But the fact is, is like there's no reason it should be that way. There's no reason. And like now, the, the reasons that they give are complete and utter bullshit. So I bring it up. Like I'll never stop bringing it up until he upgrades and freaking mans up and just puts proper control over his filters. Like, nah, if you son. really want it to be semitone control over a filter, let that be a freaking Oh my mode. god. Yeah, Ken is like, nah, son, don't mess with her. She got steppy filters. <laughs> yeah, seriously, like, it, it makes me so mad. Oh, man. It makes me so angry because I, like, man, steppy filters and like, <laughs> And, and but but here's the, here's the thing. About this for the next week. So, to, so to, to, to be fair about the steppy field, not to be fair, not to say it's <laughs> but the, the thing about it is Ken made me realize about certain steppy filters when he would he would say push the resonance up and then sweep the filter. But I and musically, I'm never doing that. that that's and never that's happening. the thing is so that's how I think people get away like with steel, it. Like, like myself and like Steel, who we actually do sound design and we're creating sounds for people to use. A lot of the times mm-hmm. those sounds are going to be one shots or they're going to be like an ambience that you're sweeping something by hand. That's when it becomes really noticeable. Yeah, like I create I create drum sounds actually with the filter. Like one of the reasons why I bought the SOB filter is because that thing 
is massive when you're just playing the filter as a kick drum. It's, like, it's insane. It's the only filter in here that I have two of because I like it that much. But yeah, it's crazy. That being said, so just to get back to the sound design aspect of it, steppy it's filters. like if your argument is, well, the filters aren't steppy unless you're doing sound design and blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, then you might as well just get a freaking digital synth. Like, yeah. if your if your filter sounds digital the way you control it, why not get a digital synth anyway? <laughs> you know, a steppy filter thing is going wild in the yeah. chat. <laughs> steppy yeah. filter yo, 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 there's there's two you insults. Like there's a, like a club DJ. Yo, there's like, there's like, it's like steppy filter, or the other insult is like MPC live envelopes. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way. <laughs> Backhand slap to Akai because I hate your envelopes. I want to slap whoever decided that that would be the only envelope that you have in your MPC Live and X. Good God, uh, what were you thinking? Yeah. Moving on. No, no, but one thing about that though, I, I, I hope that at some point they start to include other filter types where you may, it would be dope if you go into the MPC or you could choose uh, different envelope types. I mean, where yeah. you could use different filter types. It would be dope if you could choose uh, different types of well, envelopes. You have Even a if they just add. Display. Yeah. You have a touchscreen display that's really nice for editing these envelopes. Word. Why not allow me to grab the middle of the slope and instead of it having it be uh, logarithmic, let me just drag it and make that Linear. sucker exponential and do what I want with the filter curves. Yeah. Like, yeah. If the yeah, deep mind can do it, why can't I do it on my live? Come on, man. Well, you know what? <sighs> Don't we, you we don't dare know how back much talk me. No, we just don't know how much <laughs> we don't know how much programming that takes. So that's something that I'm like, that's I wish I could have too. that. Yeah, yeah, like I wish well, I could have that, but it might it might just take some work and it might well, be Well, I do to an extent. I do I do know to an extent. And what okay. I'll say is yes, like like what Corey is saying, they could just involve different filter types. That that's absolutely possible. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? At the end of the day, they made a choice yeah. but for creating instruments, which is Admittedly, it's something that's kind of further down the development of the MPC. With 2.3 and the fact that you can do multi-sampling, now it's it's extremely important that they revamp filter, uh, uh, not filters, but um, Envelope. envelopes mm -hmm. and make that mm -hmm. better, you know? Yeah, I think that would be dope. But yo, okay, let's, let's flip the script a little bit. Um, how are we having this show and we ain't mentioned Mold 1? No, hey. no, 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 no. This is all you. That's so, all you. Because <laughs> none of us got none of us got a mug one. That's why we. Corey I don't either. Has been That's hitting it. us up every day. Like, yo, look at this mug one video. Look at this mug one. Yo, I'm gonna get a mug one. Yo, help me convince my wife to buy me a mug one. Cor on. Corey's, Corey's like, yo, if my wife calls any of y'all, I just need y'all to suggest to her mug one. That's right. That's right. Wow. I was actually at Man. breakfast the other day, and, and uh, it was funny because she was saying about how she had bought me the NPC 5,000 years ago. And uh, she was like, I knew you knew what it was under the Christmas tree. I was like, well, yeah, it was the biggest shit ever. Like, it was just sitting under there. Then then she was like, and that's all. That's the most I could do. I'm not, you know, I knew how to say that. All them other scents that you be talking about, I don't know how to say that. And I looked at my daughter. I said, help me say it. Moog one that's so simple moog one that's all you need to know anyway that probably ain't gonna happen but here's the thing we haven't had a show since uh it's been announced and i think we should probably uh give it some time and kind of talk about what's what what's your thoughts on the moog one and i know the first thing is going to be like it's too expensive right no it's not oh i've calmed Good down night, on the price <laughs> i've calm it, it is still too expensive but i've calmed down I don't on, think on that I don't think it's that expensive because when you think about how many synths you're getting in one, I think mm -hmm. it's, it's three. It's three cents and and, and, one, and three drama poly is poly still poly. more. No, we drama know. Drama still gives you sixteen completely we know. separate. We, we know. But that's not all. Just <laughs> wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, right there. Sixteen uh, voices, right? Mm -hmm. Sixteen MIDI channels, so it's it's, it's uh, multi timbral, but it's not sixteen polyphonic synths. No, no, no. It's yeah. So it's three, and that's what I was getting at. Is that the it's it's surprising how similar it and the it old ass point. Andromeda are. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. so the Andromeda will give you sixteen completely separate mono synths, or you can combine them in any order you want, right? Mm -hmm. The Moguan will give you three. 
three now, polyphonic sense, or three you can polyphonic assign sense. the That's amount right. of voices to each one. Yeah. Yeah. So I got works. I got a question. I have a real important question. And this maybe maybe I'm just ignorant. Who's buying one synth to do to use it that way? And not me. Like if you buy Andromeda, you're really going to use 16 mono voices on the Andromeda? Well, no, 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 I agree, agree with that. you. No, I agree with you on that. But polyphonic analog synth. Same with the Moog, though. 16 mono synths. No, exactly. So, <laughs> so for me, I'm just, I'm just like, bro, if I'm going to have 16 mono synths, I'm going to have 16 different synths. I'm not going to use the <laughs> Moog one to do it. I, I mean, well, be, the magic Steel, in that. The reason why I bring the, that up, though, is you could set it up as four. You could no, set I'll it up you. as five. I, I, you know I'll what I mean? You. But the you, point yeah. being, the point just being is that, like, it's interesting that so Moog has been developing this for like ten years or whatever, and this is what they came out with. The thing that really gets me like wondering and really go. gets me like interested in the whole thing because. I'm I'm only really really interested in it if so they they put a lot they put a lot into the juice platform or, or is it juice or is it Linux that that's running by Oh it's both it? they they have Linux okay. uh and my point is this so there's an ethernet on top of the cable screen. port on the back right that they say is for diagnostics if something goes wrong first off if I pay you 8 grand bitch nothing better go wrong <laughs> i will smack you right uh, second the other thing is, is that all i keep thinking about is you better introduce some sort of digital magic to this thing meaning not and i don't just mean the even tide effects i mean like throw in some wave tables with an update like throw in well ken that's shipping. that's possible like, that's that the reason why that's possible i, I see it I well, see the, it as possible. Dude, That's what I'm hoping for. Most of our plugins, core gadget is all built on juice. So the mm -hmm. fact of introducing introducing any kind of update that's going to be substantial to the firmware but we don't know if that ju if if there's an audio path for that stuff we i feel like i feel, I feel, I feel like it would be but i don't know that point, for sure that's so what I'm hoping. He, here's the dope thing about but they do uh, build they, build it. they do build plugins for the other sense like Look yeah. at the controllers that they built for a sub thirty seven, even for the Minotaur. So you figure they might be building a. Well, I'm VST. hoping. I'm hoping. I yeah. mean, I look at their iOS apps yeah. and like the Model fifteen uh -huh. and uh, Animog. That stuff is great. Theramini. Yeah. That stuff is great. I just want to see that incorporated in this, <clears throat> and we don't know if that's going to happen. We so don't hold know. On, let me. Let, there's somebody asking a, a question about it where he says, "Where are the three cents or three multiple? So here's how the thing works, right? If you look at the, the picture that's on the screen, kind of towards the center and the bottom, you'll see a uh, panel focus, synth <laughs> one button, synth two button, and synth three button. If you have the eight voice or if you have the 16 voice, you can go to like synth one. And this is a total different synth. Like each one of them are totally different synths. They each have an ARP. They each have a sequencer. They each have, you know, effects inserts and then the master inserts outside of that. But hmm. you can click on synth one and uh, you can assign it, say, four voices. Then you can click on the next one and assign that eight voices. What's that? Twelve. And then whatever you might want to do, you can make one a mono synth mm -hmm. and they operate independently. And and that's what's dope. So yeah, they literally are, and you can address them by MIDI. So synth one has a MIDI channel, synth two has a MIDI channel, and synth three has a MIDI channel. You can use that like you have three separate either mono synths or analog polyphonic synths sitting wow. there in one box, right? So then on top of that, the way they did this, these are all discrete components, so it's not just a chip. So this whole joint is all discrete components, um, and they have uh, the, it's digital control, so it, it's uh, using digital control, but it has Linux on it, and mm -hmm. they're using Juice, so it's like Mister Magic Wonder Synth, like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and I, you know, I know a lot of people are like it sounds classic. Who? Well, why would you put it in? Sounds like it's old, but I don't know. When I sat and played it at uh, at Guitar Center, man, it, it it was so much more than just that. You know what mm. I'm saying? Yeah, it sounds classic, but there yeah, was I want to make it sound like a nuisance. Yeah, but that's, that's the thing. True. That's that is the that is the flip side of it is people are paying crazy money for CS80s and Jupiter Eights, and mm -hmm. it's like now you have a new synth that has a warranty, that has a company behind it that's present that could be updated through Ethernet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. So, so on that level, I'm like, yeah, okay, that's cool. 
there are some things that, like we could get into the nitty gritty and, and I guess for the people watching the show um, we can comment on some of the things like um, so Paul over at synth tech just to put him on blast because he's a great guy um, kind of <laughs> he's an engineer's engineer keep in mind this is the guy behind like Blackberry engineering um, designed well, the Moog there. MG1 for yeah. uh, for mm -hmm. realistic um, you know this is this is like a real electrical engineer and he picks apart everything he picked apart the Roland modules when they came out and he's like oh my god they're way over spec he picked apart the Moog 1 and he's like what the hell is this there was a lot of stuff that was kind of like not the highest quality that he was seeing on there and that, was he mostly talking about components in the inside yeah, or what components was he like the about? type of pots that they're using you know the mm -hmm. type of the type of chips that they're using that kind of thing right and he's just finding a lot of uh, what he would consider cut corners now keep in mind paul is one of those guys that's like if you please paul you are in rare, rare territory. Like Paul Like is, you. Yeah, yeah. But he's like me, except actually knows what he's doing. Right? So like Paul that, is, What does that mean? I mean, he has a he has not only does he have a degree, in, you know, a, a proper master electrical engineering degree, but the guy's got like 30, 40 years in the trade too. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like this guy is top level. But he pulls it apart and he's just like, what the hell? Like, he creates Eurorack modules and he's like, my Eurorack modules have better pots than this, blah, blah, blah. You know, which is one side of it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like, if you're paying that much money, you expect it to be like bespoke and. Yeah, super stable. Well, that's exactly what we talked about before with. I want uh, shaved the other truffles things. on my mobile. You get one, to a certain price point, but you get to a certain price point, you expect everything to be top notch top notch luxury right like that's not a that's not a cheap synth um by any stretch of imagination but i'll tell you it's like one of those things man it's like it's like <laughs> this is gonna be a weird little analogy but so i was downtown la and you know uh, i'm always talking crap about like the reality show broads that stuff is crazy those people they always acting crazy looking crazy and then I was downtown LA and I ran into one of those reality show chicks from one of them Atlanta shows. And I was like, holy shit, she's gorgeous. <laughs> so it's kind of like that when you sit in front yeah, of the mold yeah, one, no matter what you know. Shot? Huh? I said, who's about to get shot? Oh, nobody's going to get shot. There's no guns in this house. Corey's so, about, about to die. <laughs> about to die. <laughs> Your wife in the background, like, like who? <laughs> no, but but that's my point is right when uh when you sit in front of the Moog One, it doesn't matter what you think or what you know. It's an impressive bit of machinery yeah. sitting in yeah. front of you, and it's gorgeous. The keys feel like like buzz the best key bit I've ever felt. And what's weird is that the uh, black keys, the black keys are all matte, and it's an interesting thing. The which is super feel, dope. Feel, yeah, that's super yeah. dope because I will say like there's certain key beds that I have in my lab that I love, and the only thing I don't like about them is that they have glossy um, sharp keys, and that it mm -hmm. irritates me because my finger will roll off of those a little too easy. Um, so that's like yeah. it, it's such a minor thing, but I do really like that. I like it, man. It felt it felt nice too. I mean, it, it was a, a really nice playing experience, and um, and that touchpad on the side. Uh, let me see if I can if they got a picture of that. But the touchpad on the side where the the uh, modulation wheels are, it feels like a a, a MPC pad, <clears throat> but you know, obviously a little thinner. But the that is that kind of surface MPC pad type of surface. Hmm. Um, it's I really would nice. Of probably and, want it to be a little bit slicker. Yeah, like it's a not chaos it's, pad it's, because it, you're doing X Y movement. So I would want but it, it to but be it, smooth. It feels, you, you're right. So it, it definitely is. It, it, yeah, it's like if you took your hand on the MPC pad and kind of rubbed it across and it was like the size of two or three MPC pads. And it's very that sensitive. That was one of the things about the Roly that I always thought was kind of a little bit odd is um, I haven't played the Blocks ones, but I played the Rise and like I was invited out to a couple of Roly events. And whenever I played a Roly and I did the movements now i don't own one so it's and i've heard from many people that it is very much a um an acquired taste and like you have to learn how to play it blah 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 mm -hmm. but 
I always felt like when you press into the rolly and you slide, it kind of like it makes a, creates ripples. a wave, a ripple, yeah, it ripples. and it kind of hampers your movement a little bit. And and I yeah. always felt like, man, that should be smoothed out a little bit so it doesn't feel so difficult for me to make these movements. Yeah. Well, yeah. in that case, with that, that's the truth. But with this pad on the on the the Moog One, it's it's different than that. It it really has the firmness sort of of a MPC pad, but it doesn't feel like it's uh, any it's creating any sort of impediment to your work. How you know did what you I mean? feel about the knobs, the knobs um, and the switches? Because I I heard from other people that weren't so happy about that. One of the one of which I know bought one, mm -hmm. so he's not like he's not poo pooing it. Like he bought yeah, them, yeah. and he bought it, he's right. like, oh, I don't really like how these feel. Well, the, here's what I'll say: I only had so much time with it. The knobs didn't like jump out at me right off the bat, but at the same time, it's not the thing that I walked away thinking like, wow, that's really good. Like I walked away thinking about the modulation, the, the wheels on the side, that touchpad, the key bed, you know what I'm saying? The general build quality, but I, I don't know that I made, there was no real register of what Moog the knobs has a like. range. Like, mm -hmm. so if you remember the Slim Fatty or Little Fatty, I mm -hmm. absolutely hate the knobs on the little fatty like with a right, passion right. they're one of my fate my, my most hated knobs i just don't like <laughs> how loose they are like they just at least the one that i had it felt super just cheap mm -hmm. um the on the other hand i love the sub fatty and Weird. granite and, and the sub 37 and i know about the whole debacle with the plastic pots on them I don't care. Like it's about how it feels viscosity wise and all of that. Um, you know, if you're involved in synth design, you'll know that like certain pots have different viscosities to them. Mm -hmm. I liked how, I love how the sub 37 feels as a synth. Like, I don't feel like it feels cheap at all. I feel like it feels built really, really well. Um, that's how the grandmother feels. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and to true. me, like, that's fine. So like, if, if people are decrying the Moog One for feeling the same way that a Sub Thirty Seven feels, I'm like, well, that's much about nothing because I really like how that feels. Yeah, you know something else. There's there's a lot of little things that that make uh, the Moog One pretty dope. Like for instance, the the um, what is it the the little those little LED screens, the little screens that are beneath the the oscillators where you can kind of do, you can see what the oscillator is looking like on the oscillator side. It's not in the main window, but mm -hmm. then, then you have some other things where you can kind of tilt. But that's also the, not the an actual form. oscilloscope, right? Like from what I understand, that's just like a visual representation. I think it's just a visual visual representation. Which is fine. I mean, like, you know. Yeah. It's yeah, well, the other you thing is, the other yeah, thing any is kind of feedback every is section, good. every yeah. section on the the screen on the panel has a little triangular button in the upper right hand corner. I, I think it's all upper right hand corners, but anyway, it's a little triangular button. You press it, and what that does is it it brings up that section on the center screen, which is kind of dope. It's a really dope convenience, so it doesn't feel like you you're diving a lot into menus because. You know, if you say if you're in an oscillator section, you just hit the little triangle and it brings up everything about that in the window. Or if you're in the filter or whatever it might be, or the, the FM section, you can kind of just hit the little triangle. So it's it's real dope that way. Um, I like what they're doing with the whole modulation of the waveform and tilting of the waveform and yeah, all that. Yeah. Um, that's pretty dope. She's Have you heard anything that. about as far as the key bed having poly aftertouch or anything in an update? Because I think I had heard something about that, but I... I don't you know, recall I, hearing about anything like that. So I'm not 100% sure. I do feel like it's really surprising that there's a lack of poly aftertouch in mm -hmm. synthesizers today, let alone just straight up MPE. But like inbuilt poly aftertouch seems to be very minimal in a lot of these synths today, which Ooh. is like, why? You know, like I have a I have SQ80 directly behind me right now. Um, you can kind of see it in the corner there. Uh, that's got poly aftertouch. Granted, it's a really weird poly aftertouch, but it's there. You would think, like, with the push towards MPE these days with uh, Roly and uh, the Linstrument and that kind of thing, you would think that people would start adopting that to their key beds. Well, but, well, I don't know how much of a push that actually really is because it's kind of a specialized thing. Like, yeah, it's, I don't really use it that players. much. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a certain kind of playing style. But though. if you're if you're paying eight thousand dollars for a piece of kit, 
You better be a player. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Yeah, but, <laughs> but you, but you know what though? Is that it, that's, can, that's true? Can, you, you can, probably would feel like better, what, look. You better be a player, but my my brother, let me tell you, I've been. It's not going to necessarily be that way, especially like, uh, when you got a huge sense with all that power and so much programmability G, and, look, and three cents built in with sequences. Right? It's going to be. G, I have I have worked with people that they're like, yo, I got that new um, I got that new golden oh, crusted, and then I'm like, yo, put. They're, they're like, they're like, yo, I'm like, hey, play a, a A major, and they're like, yo, that's with three fingers, or with like, with like two. And I'm just like, oh. yo, yo, listen, uh, listen, I get what you're saying. You don't necessarily have to be a basketball player to buy the latest top level Jordans and whatnot. I mean, Me that's quite damn different. My kicks is dirty. That's dogs. totally different. That's totally different. <laughs> but it's I know, really I know. Not. Where you're going, it's really not. <laughs> it's really not different. You're paying a premium. Oh no, I get it. A I get it. Piece of equipment. It should have it. It should be everything premium on it. So no, look, I, uh, I want to call your attention too, though, uh, uh, um, on this page that I got up on the screen. That's the XY pad, and you can kind of see it's not the typical just like plastic touch surface. It's more like a rubber pad. You know, oh, what I mean? can see the texture. That's dope. Yeah, yeah, and the uh, thing that I was telling you about. If you see this this image here. Those little triangles in the right hand section, in the right hand corner. Basically, you hit that triangle button, and then it brings that section Ooh. up on the screen. Yeah, you know I mean, wow, so that's very cool. Do a bunch of digging uh, through the through the menus and stuff. So but yo, Co on each section. Uh, Corey, if you end up actually picking this one up, do you think you're going to keep your current set current setup, or are you going to actually let some sense go? You're going to switch probably, things around. Yeah, it'll probably be a situation where I switch things around and let a couple yeah, things go. But, but at the same time, though, it, the tough thing about it is it's kind of like, you know how it is with, with cats that have gears about certain textures and, and different stuff like that. Um, I don't think it could replace my Voyager, even though they're both Moogs. And right. I know, you know what I'm saying? I, I just kind of, yeah. like, there's something that you want out of the, the Voyager that, that kind of, there's a brown base that I just love out of that joint. And I think you could probably get to it in one of these joints to save it, uh, you know, in the mode one or something Cor like that. But Corey, but, that's that's why I'm going modular, man, because if I want yeah. a Voyager, I'll just build one. That's true. <laughs> Corey, can I ask you a question? Um, let, me, let me ask you about this filter. Um, so they have the, the classic Moog filter in there. Um, yeah. I don't know if it has uh, resonance gain compensation or not. Um, but I what I do does. wonder is it noticed. also has a state variable filter in it. Have, have you seen anything about like what the state variable filter design is? Like, is it based on a SEM or is it its own design or like what? You know, they don't, I don't, I've, I haven't heard anything about what it's based on. They haven't really said from what I understand, but anytime they mention it, they always end up mentioning Oberheim. <laughs> you know what Do I mean? They? Like, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So then we can they, probably they, assume that that's kind of what it's based around. That, yeah, they, well, because they keep saying makes, you can get Oberheim issues. It might be wrong, it, but it, but, it, yeah. but that's what we're just gonna have to assume if that's what they're saying. But that know? makes yeah. sense based on the kind of based on of that it's a poly, and you know if they're gonna use that filter voice structure, um, kind of Oberheim has kind of proven that that works. Like whatever yeah. filter that is with with poly voices, um. <laughs> We've only really heard. Well, what filter did they use in the memory mode? Oh, I well, don't know. That's, that's a good um, question. It, that, the filter, I believe, is actually um, discrete, and the oscillators were chips, if I can recall correctly. Okay. Um, I have to double check on that. I, it, somebody's going to kill me if I'm wrong on that. But um, of course, I don't have a memory mode, and I don't have five grand to spend on one, and nor do I have any intentions of it. My so point he, being is that gets thing. back to the whole like Andromeda is extremely similar because the Andromeda has literally like so the so there the the main the major major difference between them two is that the Andromeda uh, Arturia had custom made chips where they designed the filter of the Moog right they Arturia, did a mini Moog Alisa. filter uh, uh, yeah, Arturia made the Andromeda they did a mini Moog filter. And Oberheim and filter, and Trumba. then they put them both onto a chip, right? And stamped them both to a chip. And the oscillators, right? So they actually, like, they laid out all this um, design. 
and stamped it all to a chip. The problem was is that those chips started failing. And mm -hmm. if you go to my channel, stupid plug, uh, if you go to the Flux With It channel, <laughs> I have an interview with Glenn Darcy where he explains like how the chips over time started to fail, and that's why they stopped production of the Andromeda and whatnot. Wait, Andromeda or, is, or, or Origin? The Andromeda. This so is he was with Elisis first. So that's I think that's yeah. why I can't keep oh, going back okay, and forth. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Well, well, the so Glenn Darcy Arturian. was with the Andromeda Wait, is Elisis. Elisis. Oh, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> right. twisted. So, but, and, but but Glenn Darcy is, was the guy. He worked at Elisis and in uh, Akai. At yeah, the he, same was, time he was at Elisis when Akai the Andromeda and, came and, about. Then he left Akai to go to Arturia, where they made the origin. Sorry and, about and, that. Yeah, 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 that was my fault. So anyway, point mm -hmm. being is, is that they made these chips that had the same filter design in them, right? And same oscillator designs in them. So the difference is mainly that on the Moog One, you can do a lot more with the filter as far as like changing the angle and the symmetry and all that kind of stuff right um but the cool thing is is that you can um you can split it out you know what i mean into 16 parts the moog one you have the three parts but they they kind of use that same pathway of like a ladder filter and a sem mm -hmm. filter and that's why i'm like wow this is surprisingly similar yeah like over yeah. 10 years later it's like mm -hmm. why are you doing that over 10 years later you're kind of remake granted the moog is more discreet and it's got this mm -hmm. powerful back end but that is what keeps making me think man i really hope they do something with the digital side of this man. i feel like i feel like i hope they do and that that's you know yes to be seen uh it remains to be seen I, I, I feel like arturia kind of started to do that with the origin mm -hmm. uh because on the digital side you could switch out components internally within that environment in the origin that kind of made it like a super powerful synth like yeah it was a very of, powerful synth it was and, like a virtual sort of euro rack sort yeah, of I, yeah bro that synth was and it sounded good yeah sounded really good like so here, here's one of the things that i noticed too about uh with with the 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 one with the sequencer that's on it and and i think there's other joints that do this but you know uh joe from sounds and gear saint joe from sounds again and i were talking and what's that synth that he has over there i reviewed it and i can't remember what is it the big joint not mod x but the other one. Oh, the the montage yeah, the montage. So the thing is about the way the modulation is, how you can sequence all the different modulations. You have that that super otherworldly sort of uh, modulation that you can do. So on the Moog One, it's a similar thing. You can you can program or you can sequence in the sequence of modulation, so that when you're playing, the modulation is playing and it's kind of stepping through the sequencer, so it's creating all this kind of so basically sort of thing. basically a voltage block in mm -hmm. in and the Moog the, One. The, in the Moog One, yeah, it's okay. Crazy. So I'll just build one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, just, uh, I'll just build it. Y'all can keep that. Y'all can keep that, eight grand. I'll give well, me. That, that kind of brings me back to this thing I've been thinking about the whole time you guys been talking. Is like you, Corey, in particular, because you're really hyped on the uh, on the Moog One. What is it about? Like, is there a specific sound that you think is missing from what you're trying to do that you think that the Moog One has? Polyphony. <laughs> Well, no. Nah. Well, besides polyphony, because we can get a lot of um, polyphonic synthesizers, mm -hmm. but is it something that the um, the Moog One is doing, or does it sound? Is, is is it something in that that's like I have to have that for my future tracks, or else? I mean, I gotta have it. That's the sound I've been well, looking for. I think for. it's the whole thing together. One, it's the uh, it's the that classic Moog sound, but when I sit and play it, it's it's something else that's kind of new too, though, right? So yeah, I got a, a couple poly synths over here, but it don't necessarily sound like that. And I think I like the idea of having you know the way the sequences are uh, three different synths and one kind of it's just a lot of power under the hood and behind the thing and when I'm play when I was playing it and then with those effects too right because it has built right, effects right. and I mean it's just like the whole package just sounds damn good and it, it's it's just a powerful freaking synth I feel like uh, so it's just like with anything else when you sit down in front of different equipment you tend to think a little different and, and it tend to drives a little bit differently how you might create with this versus that how, right. how did the moog one sound without effects uh, i thought it sounded pretty good without effects um 
Uh, I can't say that I sat there and went too in depth. You're talking to a guy that had maybe an hour and a half sitting behind it. It sounded pretty decent without mm. effects, but it sounded <laughs> glorious with effects and modulation. Because the reason why <laughs> you know what I mean. no, the, the yeah. reason why I'm asking is because for the same price, you can get that Eventide H9000 uh, rack unit, um, which has 16 H9s in it. Yeah, for the same price though, just the effects. <laughs> no, but Corey, Corey, it's, it's Corey, it's okay, no, Corey, no, 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 yeah. it's it's yes. six, it's sixteen of these, and it the effects can go mm -hmm. in and out. You can process both ways. Right, right. That's dope. So yeah, it's I like can't front, I can't front on that. It's the rack mount joint. I saw it because you told yeah, me about it. It's before. it's like so. it's like probably one of the last rack mount effects units you'll ever need. Because it's literally think about the H9, the fully maxed one. Mm -hmm. Think about 16 of those in right. one rack unit. Yeah, that's ill. I can't front on that. That's ill. That's what's up. That's yep. wild. So yeah. for me, I'm just like, mm, I'll just hook up Omnisphere to one of those things and I'll be straight. Mm. I'm or, trying to hear them all going on a track though. I'm I haven't heard anybody. Do you know any um like top level producers actually producing with the Mogwan at the moment? I think uh, Flylo has one. I saw some video of him, somebody in the studio with Flylo and somebody else. They they had. I'm gonna have one. I'm gonna. I have think one. you got to give it time too. I yeah, mean, you definitely got to give like, it time. That's like when, when I got into that conversation. Um, so Mark Doty had com commented <laughs> on the. Yeah, I know. It's, so Mark Doty had commented on the 808 and was basically saying he was trying to imply that the 808 had the a similar history to the 303 which is laughable at best um and he said uh oh yeah you know the the 808 wasn't really accepted and it didn't it didn't get you know any popular use for a long time after it came out blah 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 and it was like, nah, dude. And that's not like, true. It had number one hits <laughs> like two years after it came out. What the yeah. hell are you talking about? And he didn't want to accept that at all. But you know, Bambada and them had been using it, and and it had that, definitely it had it major, major use. He is the thing. But you got to give a little bit of time after a piece of gear comes out before you start really hearing it on tracks like that. Because guess what? Not only does creative content take a little bit of time, but then there's the back end of pressing up you know records and you know at least back then pressing up records and getting out to distribution and all that well Nowadays, that's why my still... that's why my question is applicable because we're in a digital age so everything's being uploaded so i'm assuming that somebody would have made a track by now it's been out for like a there's couple a couple months, of right? demos on no YouTube. yeah yeah there's no, a couple I mean, yeah. Yeah. Some, not some, demo yeah. not demo but actual like music no there's dudes hear. yeah there, yeah there's dudes the making dude music compositions with it, um, with it that's yeah, yeah uh yeah. what's this guy's name uh his name is elric hold on he he's the guy that gets every synth and then just makes i want to hear i want to hear it because it. Um, i, I want to see how it sits in the mix and my my fear is that it does like that same thing that the um like the Juno does, where it just um, where it just takes over, you know, takes over the track when you when you hit it when with all that polyphony. You know? Oh, um, E San Gelsi, he, e he yeah, it's E H S A N G E L S I. He does things where he it's the Moog One Grandmother System Fifty Five and the Digitech. He's just yeah, making that music. Dope. That's it. That's the you one know, I was wow. thinking. Of. Yeah, he's dope. Man. Oh, wow. His stuff okay. is dope. You know who he's else has one that I'm actually excited to hear how to use it? We are King. That the those. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, that that girl group, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're she really played, good. Her chord selection and the way she plays is so soulful and so ill. I oh, can't, mm. yeah. Like Corey, that. that's that's another thing I was going to tell you. Like when I first saw the Mogwan videos, I was like, eh. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I feel about this joint. Cause, <laughs> right. Because right. everybody was like quack, 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 quack on that joint. And I was just like, mm, I'm going to have to give it some time until I know somebody that has musical taste that matches my yes. perspective is mm -hmm. going to play the. Because even when Robert Glasper played it, I was expecting Robert him to play Glasper it. Went I was ex crazy. Right I was there. I didn't well, the thing that. is, he was, <laughs> no, he was playing it like a clap. Mm -hmm. He was. He had, he had a clap setting on it. So you could only Which hear doesn't it. really doesn't really give you the it doesn't the, give you the, the color perspective of the synth. Yeah, it or, doesn't really give you good perspective on the synth, or, that synth. 
or even when Chick Corea was playing it, he was playing with, with a triangle wave with a tiny bit of modulation on it and mm -hmm. a little bit of reverb. He wasn't, re he was playing the Chick Corea sound that you hear on, right. on Return to Forever albums. He was playing that same lead mm -hmm. that he plays on the, on the Moog One. So for me, I was like, man, I know these are killer musicians, but I don't really hear any sound examples yet mm -hmm. that's blowing me away. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I felt um, when I first heard it. Then I saw this dude making music with it. And I was like, yo, this thing is pretty dope. And I already spoke to my wife. I told her, I'm going to get me one of these. Like, Well, yeah. let me let me just say this. So which, um, well, no, not which, but I feel like there's a polar opposite kind of thing going on right now um, between <clears throat> the Moog One and the Quantum. So mm -hmm. the Waldorf Quantum. The Waldorf Quantum speaks to me more than the Moguan because the Quantum to me says like I'm the future. I'm trying to do something different. I'm trying to I agree do with that. that hasn't been done. The Moguan to me says I'm classic, but I'm trying to do classic in a in, in a more powerful way, which is great too. But to me, I, I think the, my the money quantum, is saving towards a quantum. Yeah, the quantum to me, Ken, honestly uh speaks to your personality a little bit more because yeah, your name like, is flux yeah. like flux and quantum two words that kind of like they work and, together and i know that's a really silly reason to say why it speaks to you more but i feel like knowing you i'm like oh he would definitely go for the quantum more than he would go for the mogul one not only because of price but dude i know you i know the kind of sounds that you're striving to make and i know that the yeah. quantum is kind of more on in that place of what of what you're trying to do right and now, not to mention the quantum has the quantum is next level in the way it does what it does and what it has available for you like you can do multi samples but it's not going to be multi samples the way you do multi samples anywhere else it's multi samples centered in the mix of all in the midst of all of that uh synthesis power you know what I mean? Like, so mm -hmm. it's aiming to take your multi samples and turn them into other things all the way together different. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it's, yeah, it's when, when, I heard, really... when I heard you say that it had, um, 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 oh my God, I just lost it. When it, when it was like kind of like the clouds, you said that it had like a um, granular synthesis on it, right? Yeah, yeah, it has a granular synthesis, Ooh, it has a resonator, it, it has a, all kind. It had, they say it has five different forms of sampling on wow. it. Wow. So, uh, does it do live sampling? Like, I can hook yeah. up, I can like hook up an audio source to it and just record in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you can sample yeah. directly into it. You can do resonators, you can do wavetables, you can do does all it, kinds of great stuff. Does you it can have do a speech synthesis with it? You does it have do a sequencer? Kind of, yeah. So, the thing about it to me is, um, it has not, I haven't seen full demonstrations of what, um, what I've fully wanted to see, and uh, I haven't gotten my hands on it post sound designers having their hands on it. So beforehand, just not actually like, so the actual sound design process is a long drawn out process where you have to get to know a piece of instrument. You have to know where the boundaries are of it sounding good. And I get that. The time that I had with it was well before that had happened. And also short enough that I didn't get to explore those boundaries. So yeah. I wasn't in love with how it sounded um, at that time. However, I think, I think your mind would change now. Well, architecturally, I really like like 78% of it. Like there's certain things about it architecturally that I'm like, man, I really wish they had done this differently. But for the most part, it really, really intrigues me. <laughs> <clears throat> to the point where I'm saving up for one. Yeah, I can't front on that. I, I I can see why you would be saving up for one. Now I can say during this this synth uh, event that I went to, you guys all know about it. I went there so that I could put my hands on Moog One, and apparently uh, Vintage King was going to bring the Moog One, and somebody bought it was the only one that they had, and so they had the choice: take it to the synth fest or send it to the guy who just paid for it. Right? Obviously, the right thing to do was send it to the guy who paid for it. So there was no Moog One at that synth fest, but the Quantum was there. So I went and I played the the quantum and I was pleasantly surprised at how dope it sounded and how, you know, the presets and the, the sound design had come, uh, had become a little more mature since we checked it out at NAMM. 
that joint is an incredible sin. It was rich and, design patches, right? Because I know he's designing stuff for it. I don't know if I don't I don't know if they were Richard design, Divine patches, but I think some of them were, and and it was it, it sounded pretty damn incredible. I'll say well, it sounded incredible like, enough for me to say to raise an eyebrow, like, hmm, well, well maybe I should explore my options too, though. I have a few <laughs> friends that I I thoroughly respect as sound designers. Um, so there's Mike Huckabee. He tends to make really just. Not insane sounds, just very usable sounds that I like a lot. Mm -hmm. Mike Huckabee is a great sound designer. Yep. Um, I'm going to butcher this name when I say it because I've never heard it said to my face. <laughs> uh, but I am friends with him on Facebook and whatnot, and I've worked on a lot of projects with him. Uh, Bull Gertz, I think is his name. Uh, but he's a sound designer with, with Arturia, and he's fantastic. Probably my favorite sound designer um, as far as presets are concerned, just because he gets, he strikes the right balance between, um, you know, something usable and something that's kind of reaching the boundaries of what should be done. Um, so there, there's, when, when you're listening to presets of a synth, there's a, a wide range that you can go, but something about the way the Waldorf is designed speaks to me. Both yeah, I can graphic, see that. The graphical display is really pretty. So they're like, I'm the first person to admit, I enjoy the fact that things are elegant and pretty to work with. You know what I mean? I like that. Like that shouldn't be something that makes you ashamed when people talk about blinking lights in a modular. Uh, well, blinking I lights to, in a I modular. That shouldn't offend you. Like, you know, it, yeah. if you like that, you like that. That's fine. Um, but the, um, the whole... The whole design aesthetic of the Waldorf Quantum really speaks to me. It gets me excited. That's what I know. Design on it. That's the, that's what I know. I can see that. And when I was in front of the Quantum, I was thinking I could see why Ken is more excited about this. Yeah, because we know Ken. Right? We know we Ken. Know Ken. You, you know yeah. it already. So, hey, I want to switch it up before we get out of here. I want to mention, like, if you're going to be in LA around March 28th through 31st, there's going to be Synthplex. Uh, Hard, soft, modular DJ pedals and more. It's going to be a synthesizer convention, and um, you know we probably have some pretty cool stuff coming up. I'm talking to them about doing some mod bap stuff there, maybe a mod bap panel. I just have to kind of work it out. And so, if you're going to be around, definitely check this out. Um, I just want to throw that out there for cats that didn't know. Yeah. That's, oh that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's super dope. Who's but, flying me out there for that? But Aaron don't don't want to be talking about like mod bap secrets. <laughs> no, no, let's no, get, no. Let's get back to some mod bap, man. <laughs> my, bad, my bad secrets. He was like, "Don't." He's like, "Don't tell him about the Nord." <laughs> he's uh, kicking you under the table. <laughs> I know, right? Well, no, especially if you're trying to bid on one. I mean, they're already pretty hard to grab anyway. I yeah, haven't been able to find one. Yep. The thing is yeah, that the, they're hard to grab. Yeah, but I heard the the three sounds just as good. It's just the interfacing is a little bit different. The so, yeah, the interface has the pads different. built on, and you can't like you can't get it separated, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. you need it to be separated. You need to use it kind of like a module <laughs> because um, I was I was actually um, joking with uh, Corey one night. It's like you start getting into it a little too much, and you beat and hit the um, knobs off. You know, yeah, because it's because you. as you're building it, but um, as it is right now, can I? You can you flip the camera in this thing? Oh yeah, yeah. As it is right now, yeah. And then you just use it with uh, I use it with the Octatrack, of course. Go, you know. Um, but yeah, I go for that um, instead of the uh, instead of the three. I like the. So two. can I let me, can I quiz you a little? But you bit can't about find the, twos out there. That's the problem. Can I quiz you a little bit about you that? You can't find. Uh, not not on the not on the chat because I might say some off some weird stuff. <laughs> but so. <laughs> My main thing is this, is that the Nord drum, the, the one reason why I haven't grabbed the Nord drum uh -huh. is because the one knob interface to me looks really uninspiring. Um, okay. Can you speak to designing your own sounds from scratch on that? Oh, yeah, it's not really that bad. Um, have you watched the demo for it? Um, there's a demo on I've the... Seen, uh, yeah, like... I've, se I've seen some workflow stuff on it, but yeah, it's... I'm more talking about, like, your actual day-to-day -day use case of it. Like, do you find yourself, like, do you go to a preset and then tweak it, or, like, what do you do? Yeah, so there's a bunch of different kind of, like, um, 
modes. Like there's an FM mode, there's like an analog mode and et cetera. So once you kind of get, it's kind of like the plonk, right? So like once you, um, you know, like in the plonk, like once you kind of get like, if it's a membrane or, yeah. or a string or something like that, like once you get that core sound, you kind of know what you're dealing with as a, um, um, as a, as a physical aspect and you just kind of shape it from there. I know it's just one knob, but it's really fast. You'll get used to it. It's super fast, and, and I, I do have the uh, pads, so I can hit it. So it's good when you're designing, if you're constantly hitting it and then making your tweaks and then kind of getting it to where you want it, and then save it and then use it with your OctaTrack or your MPC or something like that. So what's the big difference between the two and the three, though? Is it a different, like, sort of architecture between the two? For, for me, or is it for, just interface? I think it's just the interface. Um, the only thing I noticed was that the fact that it was connected to the pads, and I didn't want that. Mm -hmm. I, wanted, I wanted it to just be a module. So, like, if you want to get the three, because I think the three is, they go for, like, the same price. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the big appeal of the two is the fact that you could take this little little box, which is, like, the size of a... I mean, it's really small, man. Yeah. Um, and, and you have a lot of power. I'm telling you, it's, it's a like lot of FM power. It's like FM and wavetable. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. There's physical everything. modeling. I think. Yeah. It's like a machine drum. Yeah. Um, yeah. kinda. Um, but yeah, it, it's more like a plonk, to me. Yeah. 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 I um, love. You know, I love plonk, man. I already, I already made like almost a whole drum kit with that joint. By the You're way, not, are you are you dumb. are you cheating and pushing the random button? No, no, I'm going to yeah. like, <laughs> going through making I'm pushing that random button. That random like, button, uh, that random button is fire though. The random button is fire, right? Yeah, yeah. that joint is fire. Yeah. So yo, we're gonna um, we we've been on for uh damn it's been a it's been a while now we've been on for yeah, a it's bit. been a while <laughs> so so let's wrap this up man and uh let's convene again soon yeah um, the north yeah the north drum two is whack yeah <laughs> <laughs> last words that's crazy <laughs> Famous last words so anybody got anything they want to plug or any last words they want to say before we be out. I got um I got some new uh NPC kits that aren't finished and Boy, they'll be out when I finish them. You turned them. up the echo for yourself. That wasn't me. Oh, that's me. I'm sorry. My, my I just turned my monitors on. Still trying to hijack me again. I got <laughs> I got some kits that are not done that Stop will be kids. done eventually, and then I'll put them out. How about that for a plug? <laughs> That, that works for me, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Aaron, uh, what you got going on, man, that you might want to tell the people about as we get out of here? Oh, nothing much, man. I'm just playing it low-key. Word. Uh, D-Still? Uh, and December is going to be kind of kind of rough for me, but besides that, you know, MSX, we're always working on new kits. Uh, if you haven't, go gone and copped our MPC expansion. Uh, and then we have another one that we worked on with Ken because, you know, he's part of the squad. Man, we're just working on a bunch of stuff, man. But look, look, be on the lookout. It's going to be Word. something. Always, Word. always something dropping. And uh, as far as music, I'm kind of on a little bit of a hiatus because I'm learning modular right now. So I'm learning how to patch. And uh, and then I'll be back with Vengeance. Yo, can Clark. we get um a push to get Aaron onto some kind of like digital platform to release? I know, man. Like, I can't <laughs> nah, find you know, dude only, nowhere. No, nah, because I only I only do vinyl, man. Yeah, but can we see you at least on like on Instagram or something like, like your face? <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna start bootlegging. I'm gonna start bootlegging digital releases of his vinyl. I'm not either. He'll bootleg the digital release of my vinyl. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to start sending cops to your house to see if you're alive. Like, yo, you know what it is. All of all the rest of us give URLs. He gives a barcode. Yeah, right. <laughs> he gives a PO box. PO box. <laughs> barcode. Just like when Cool J was trying to get a deal at Def yeah. Jam. <laughs> so yo, uh, uh, let me let me ask y'all, man. What I don't I know, you know, things change and stuff. What y'all got going on for next Saturday, man? We could jump on and do this again. I'll be around. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. you know I'm all, I'm always around. Corey, I'll actually, I'll actually, I actually get to LA on Saturday, so I'm there Saturday night. Okay. Oh wow. Word, yeah, okay. word. Well, hit me up when you get in town, man. We gotta yeah, get up and we'll get, we'll go hang out a little bit. Yeah, because I'm there. Yeah, the, so you got things going on. Well, that's only on that Sunday, so I'm there to the 12th. Okay, but oh, you, 
Yeah, we'll, we'll talk. I'll be around. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. First couple we'll days that you're here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. All right, y'all. Yo, thanks a lot. All right, guys. Have a good night.